ihayag ang pinakahuling kalagayan ng COVID-19 crisis sa bansa at ang mga hakbang na ginagawa ng pamalaan laban sa pandemya mula sa Pangulo ng Republika ng Pilipinas, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Ito ang Talk to the People on COVID-19. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mayor. Uh, before I uh, proceed, let me welcome and also our uh, thanks to our guest tonight who took time to join us and uh, help us explain to the people why things are the way they are. Uh, you know, there are a lot of questions that uh, uh, which have just to be answered uh, because the people have the right really to know uh, what's going on. After all, <laughs> We serve them. So, nagpapasalamat ako kay Dr. Edsel Maurice Salvania, Member Technical Advisory Group Tag COVID-19, uh, Dr. Marisa Alejandria, Member Tag for COVID-19, Dr. Anna Lim, uh, Member Tag COVID for COVID-19 and Dr. Cynthia Palme Saloma Executive Director the Philippine Genome Center University of the Philippines You know this is not really a scheduled meeting but the last time we had uh, it talked to the people uh, who it's a uh, and uh, Secretary Bilio of the Department of Labor was invited. And in nutshell, he was complaining about the length of time that the OFW and returning travelers or travelers and OFWs are being detained uh, uh, to use the word uh, too long that's what he said and uh, it has depleted the budget that has been allotted by government sa kanila sa uh, Department of Labor so there was uh, a bit of a discussion but I thought it twice to just uh, maybe cut it and uh, since this is a question of science and med uh, medical issue it would be uh, useless for us to be debating here and talking about these things we will uh, just uh, invite the experts and uh, so that they can uh, shed light provide enlightenment to us and to the public why this is so now the 
thing here is uh, I'd like to ask uh, Secretary Bellio, are you, do you want or are you ready to repeat your, uh, uh, they are here. I, I, I would rather that uh, sabihin mo na lang yung sinabi mo no, noon kasi wala sila dito so that they can respond correctly and accurately uh, to your, well, it, it might be your misgivings or it might be your uh, doubts. Hindi nila narinig eh. But so kailangan, um, you, 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 might, you might just repeat it. Anyway, it's, it, it's for public good. Uh, wala namang problema dyan kung sino ang mali kung sino ang hindi. There's nobody here who is really correct and nobody here who is totally wrong insofar as public good is concerned. So I would rather that uh, you repeat what uh, you have uh, complained, it was really complained, and uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, with due respect to our medical experts, especially the technical working group of the inter interagency task force, I came up with a report, Mr. President, about the heavy burden that the new protocol has on our resources. Ang sinasabi ko nga, Mr. President, from the record of the IATF and TFTGROF, one stop shop, yung COVID-19 testing positivity rate of returning overseas Filipinos for 2020 is only 2.07%. Ngayon, under 2021, Mr. President, the current quarantine protocol of seven to nine days stay of OFWs in hotel quarantine facilities, the COVID-19 testing positivity rate is only 1.5%. Kaya nga po, kami nakikiusap sana, Mr. President, na kung mari, we go back to the regional protocol noon na pagdating noong ano, noong ating mga OFWs, swab agad sila. Then, they are quarantined for five days while waiting for the result of the, this, the PCR test. Eh kapag negative sila, then they can be transported to their final destination. Kasi, Mr. President, aside from the economic uh, consideration, these OFWs have long missed their homes. Ang tagal nila abroad kumikita, nagihirap para lamang kumita para sa pamilya nila. Ngayon, inuwi natin sila. And they have to stay for almost 14 days in quarantine. Notwithstanding the fact na after five days, they have been found to be negative. Bakit hindi natin sila pawin, Mr. President? And going back to my uh, figures na 2.7% lang naman ang nagpapakita na yung ating mga overseas Filipinos eh nagpapas na si Tib sila. Kaya yun po ang pakiusap namin. Of course, I will still yield to the uh, decision of the IATF, Mr. President. Kaya lang gusto ko pong iparating yung kalagayan ng ating mga OFW. Talagang hirap na hirap sila, Mr. President. They are crying. Eh, yung, itong cellphone ko, Mr. President, no less than three to 500 text messages I receive from them every day. Akin lang kami uwi. Ang tagal naman ng resulta ng, ng PCR. Ganun, Mr. President. And, and we cannot close our eyes to the miseries of our OFWs. Kaya yun, pakiusap lang naman, Mr. President. Kung pwede naman, Pwede lang. Kung hindi naman, then we still submit to the decision of the IATF, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, is that all? Yun na yun, Bot? Yun naman talaga ang sinabi mo noon. It's just the same. Eh? Uh, so, I'd like to call uh, si before our uh, uh, government uh, members of the panel. I'd like to call Dr. Edsel Maurice uh, Sarpania. 
certain you enlighten this uh, enlighten us on this yes uh, thank you mr president uh, good afternoon to all the members of the iatf and the resource persons um i am uh, i completely uh, understand and commiserate with uh, secretary bello that this is really something that is a difficult uh, situation especially quarantine ako po last year na quarantine rin po ako and it was really the longest few days of my life na separated from the family So I understand the personal impact uh, of this po. Uh, however, we know po that uh, COVID, uh, especially the variants of concern, have come into the country through um, the different, ano po, through, the, through, through returning uh, travelers po. And this is why it is really essential that we have some sort of control to prevent the entry of these variants of concern. Um, do I have my slides? Uh, can I ask the secretary to share my slides? Uh, while we are waiting, Mr. President, I think that uh, everybody naman is cognizant of the fact that um, the quarantine uh, has already, um, you know, it, it really has an impact. Uh, but uh, what our proposed solution po is actually there is data that we can shorten quarantine from 14 days to 10 days, provided uh, that the person remains uh, asymptomatic uh, during that whole time. The second uh, point that we will make po once I have my slides is also that uh, the testing, kasi ang timing po ng testing is really the problem. If if somebody gets uh, infected in transit on the plane, pag tinest niyo po siya pagdating, hindi pa po magpapositive yan. It usually takes three to five days for the um, person to turn positive on PCR. And um, so that's why po yung uh, ginawa natin is we test on the fifth day. But based on the Department of Health data, in fact, even after the fifth day, there are still about 40% of people who still test positive on the seventh day po of arrival. So our uh, proposed solution po kasi is that um, the testing, even on the fifth day, will still not pick up everyone. So it is either we test on the seventh day or we completely do away with the testing but make sure that we quarantine everybody until the tenth day po. Um, and this can be done in facility but again it is very expensive or we can do this at home as long as the LGUs can uh, uh, supervise strict every day. Parang po yung sa Singapore na alam po nila kung lumalabas yung tao o hindi. Um, uh, para sigurado po na hindi sila maka hindi sila maka spread ng COVID because that is really our biggest concern is that if somebody comes in with a variant of concern and um, tra- uh, transmits it to the community which has already happened in Pasay um, uh, magkakalat po talaga and magsusearch po tayo ulit uh, test on arrival po tapos uh, is negative complete 14 days isolation at home or at the LGU And then, noong December 2020 po, when we met with you po sa Malacanang because of the variant, ang ginawa po natin, 14 days facility-based quarantine. And we tested on the fifth day. And then, earlier this year, in February, we shifted to the five-day facility quarantine with testing on the sixth day. And uh, kung negative, uh, rinirelease po. Uh, with the stipulation that the LGU continue to uh, uh, make sure that they quarantine to complete 14 days po. Next slide, please. So, ito po yung advantage nung dati, before December, mabilis po siya kasi testing on arrival, and of course, it's less costly. The disadvantage is that because kung nahawa ka ng virus in the plane, hindi pa magpa-positive yung test mo, and if we release you, then magsa- ikakalat mo po yung virus in your uh, LGU if they are not very good at ensuring na na-quarantine po kayo ng 14 days. Uh, so, nasa handoff po ito, from uh, the airport to the LGU na nagkakaroon ng problema. Next slide, please. And then, yung from December 2020 to February 2021, ito po actually was ideal because we really kept people in facility for 14 days. And halos nakita nyo naman po, wala tayo naging holiday surge. Um, we were able to control the variants up to February. So, your, uh, ano po, yung, yung inutos nyo po ito na two weeks na facility-based quarantine, this was the most efficient way of controlling the entry. The problem is, po, it's very expensive and was not sustainable. And that is why we changed it in February. Next slide, please. 
And when we changed it in February, the stipulation was five days and then test. And then the LGU should strictly monitor the completion of quarantine. And the advantage of this was less extensive. Uh, and the testing on the fifth day is better than testing on arrival. Because again, if you test on arrival, baka nagtatago pa yung virus, hindi pa po siya magpa-positive. But the disadvantage, as uh, Sec. Bello has already said, this is still very expensive. Um, and now that we have seen that even up to the seventh day, pwede pa sila mag-test positive sa seventh day rather than the fifth day. So may namimiss pa rin po. And of course, uh, we did have some lapses. Kaya po, kasama rin po dun sa ating search ngayon, nakita po natin kumalat ng konti yung variants of concern. Uh, next slide, please. And so, yung just uh, some definitions po, when we talk about uh, true and false positives, yung pag nag-positive po sa PCR, almost always tunay po yan. The only question is whether nakakahawa siya or nakarecover na siya. Um, and then, we can distinguish this naman as long as we look at the history of the traveler, kung nagkaroon na siya ng symptoms, most likely, nawawala na yon. Pero kung nagsisimula pa lang yung symptoms niya, that is a real positive. We can distinguish that po. So, true posi false positive is very rare. So, hindi po namin iniisip yun masyado. If somebody tests positive, the safest action po talaga is to isolate, especially kung may variants of concern tayo. Kasi nakita nyo naman kahit yung nangyari sa Benguet, isa lang yung makalusot, catastrophic po talaga. Next, please. Um, this is uh, this really just shows po yung rate of RT-PCR result. Uh, if you notice, wala pong 100% dyan. And that is why we say that testing is optional kasi even if you test someone who is symptomatic, there's still a possibility na mag-negative pa rin yung test. Uh, and so this is why it is uh, we say that testing is optional for as long as we can complete the 10 days quarantine. Kasi yun po yung mas sigurado to say na hindi nakakahawang isang tao rather than testing on the first day, on the fifth day, or on the seventh day. Next slide, please. Um, this is this just shows the period na nagpa-positive po yung virus at kung kailan po siya nakakahawa. Next slide, please. So ito po yung proposed changes as we have already mentioned. Uh, we can shorten the duration of quarantine from 14 days if no, there are no symptoms to the end of 10 days. Basta walang symptoms, we can do it 10 days. Testing is optional unless somebody is symptomatic. If we are going to test someone who does not have symptoms, it should be done on the seventh day. Ideally pa rin, facility-based quarantine, but we recognize that this is very expensive. If for LGU home quarantine, as long as it can be assured, dapat daily po and strict compliance at home, and dapat set up po talaga yung house. And then any positive, the test will be reviewed, but the safest to assume it is still contagious and you need to complete isolation. Next slide, please. So there are two options that we are talking about. One is strict facility quarantine and selective testing. So we, we want everyone to get uh, isolated for 10 days, uh, but you can optional po yung 7th day testing. Kahit walang testing, uh, pag nakompleto yung 10 days and walang symptoms, we can release them po. Uh, next slide, please. And then option two, if uh, tapos po talaga yung funds for, for facility-based quarantine, we can do strict LGU quarantine. If they are set up at home, we can do that. If not, uh, sa TTMF kung pwede. And uh, selective testing uh, as mentioned on the seventh day po. Next slide. And that's it po. Thank you very much. Uh, ang sunod si, have I called Dr. Ana Onglin? Good evening po, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. um, the Technical Advisory Group had um, some preliminary discussions po regarding the uh, current issue. And um, we were thinking that uh, based on the data that we have right now, uh, it's a better option to um, review the testing protocol, uh, make sure that it can be done at a later, uh, rather recommend that it be done at a later time, but that the critical intervention should really be um, that quarantine should be strictly enforced because um, whether or not testing is done for as long as quarantine can be imposed, then we continue to keep our borders safe. So, yun pong nuances nun, 
um, uh, when the test is best done, um, will actually be moot kung uh, ma-i-impose po natin yung, ng maayos yung quarantine from end to end. Sir, I uh, mentioned po um, that the um, recommendation that the TAG um, worked on uh, as it met prior to this uh, briefing was actually to propose that um, it's more critical to focus on quarantine measures uh, because this will ensure that any entry of variants um, from travelers can be better controlled. Um, this is really coming from the um, fact that tests uh, always have a false negative rate. And um, if we really want to secure our borders, then the only way to go is to implement quarantine strictly. Um, well, preferably for 14 days, but at the minimum, at least for 10 days po. And then yung testing um, can actually be something that we will forego kung may implement po natin yung sampung araw at kung ano man po yung mga savings na magigenerate kahit hindi, dahil hindi na po tayo magtetest, pwede naman po sigurong maipasok naman dun po sa ating quarantine program if you feel that that's something that will help po. I would go next is to do. Tora Marisa Alejandria, the member of the TAG, TAG for COVID-19. Dr. Nun, Mr. President, Dr. Nun, Secretary Nun. Bell. Yes, uh, I appreciate and understand the physical, mental, and emotional burden, plus the financial burden, the economic burden, uh, brought about by our quarantine policy. However, we recognize also that the quarantine is really one way to prevent the spread of the virus and considering that this virus has a pre-symptomatic, yung may tinatawag tayong face na kahit wala pang symptom, pwede na siyang makahawa. Kaya, that is the basis for, for the 14 days. Uh, yung incubation period is uh, 5 to 14 days. So median of 5 to 7 days. Ang pinaka-infectious period is yung first week, 5 to 7 days. And that was the basis of uh, testing at the fifth day. But as uh, mentioned by Dr. Salvania, and uh, we look for new data, no, so there is data from CDC and they did modeling studies also that the, we can reduce the quarantine period to 10 days no, from 14 days without testing and the um, residual no, transmission risk goes, is just about 1%. It no, can go down to 0.1 to 10%. So yun yung parang... Uh, compromise or it's a good compromise in the sense that uh, we reduce the duration of the period of quarantine with minimal effect on the number of infections that we may miss out so just point as long as they remain asymptomatic without symptoms and uh, they will complete the quarantine period no uh, in the LGU at home or at the temp uh, quarantine facilities with strict implementation and monitoring. Po. So we, the tag experts, now we concur that we can relax the 14 days to 10 days without testing as long as they remain asymptomatic and monitoring is uh, strictly implemented at any period that. Uh, the traveler or the overseas Filipino worker gets symptoms during that 10 day, then testing should be done. So the system should be in place not to be able to isolate once they get symptoms and 
they get tested and then uh, that's uh, the policy that uh, we can uh, adapt if we are to uh, considering that uh, they taking into consideration the economic burden, the physical, emotional burden that uh, the 14 day quarantine is uh, imposing. Thank you, Pop. So, uh, Doctor, uh, may tanong ko lang ho sa inyo. So, the 10 okay. days is the barest minimum. Opo. Para uh, it cannot go. Hey. Pinaka, mm -hmm. ano na yan, ho? Ay, okay. And days po without testing. May isang scenario, if we want to test, test at 7 days. Y yung first week kasi talaga po yung pinaka highest uh, possibility that you will develop symptoms. So test at 7 days and then wait for the result. If negative, then pwede nang ma-release. So mababawasan siguro from 10 to, depending on how fast the turnaround time of the result is, go down to 8 days, 9 days. No? But with testing, if we want testing, but it has to be at the seventh day. Yeah. That's the uh, other scenario. Siguro, i-costing yun, no? Uh, how much is the cost of the test and the... Uh, kung mabawasan yung 10 days ng 9 days, 8 days, no? If uh, you have a negative result. So, the quarantine period should not go below 7 days. So, maglalaro lang po sa 7 to 10 days. Kumula, maglalaro tayo ng testing. Para mabawasan yung period. Bob, uh, Secretary Bello, do you have any question? Uh, no more, Mr. President. I think uh, Secretary Galvez and Secretary Anyo already joined me. Well, uh, it is clear that really the medical uh, guys would really go for the strictest measure. Uh, as a matter of fact, they are not, uh, from, the, from what I sense, is that they are not ready to move an inch backward. Uh, uh, to them, uh, the paramount interest, uh, you know, we were discussing here about the expense of government. Uh, and you would notice that they never mentioned about money, except that they are really insisting to the strictest uh, measures to protect our borders nga. So, let us, uh, that would be a good discussion after this uh, meeting. Uh, do you still have uh, anything to say, Dr. Ong? Wala na po. Thank you po, Mr. President. Salamat po, ha? Then, uh, pero, Mr. President, uh, we, I'll go back to the offer of... Uh, Dr. Saldanya and tumatawa si Dr. Si Dr. Alendria na they agreed to lower from 14 to 9. Mm, so I think we can settle for that until we come up with our position before the IATF, Mr. President. Well, unless also there is something uh, or more than just uh, what I'm hearing now and previously, uh, I must also be convinced that it is really Medyo ano ako, I'm, I'm uh, quite not uh, uh, comfortable with the, the relaxation that uh, it's being uh, uh, brought about, uh, brut being brooded uh, now. Ako medyo ano ako, but uh, so let us see. Um, President? Maybe we'd we'll be more educated if we hear... Dr. Cynthia Palmes Saloma. Baka ma malinawan tayo. We can agree on or disagree. Me, I, I seem to, to side with the uh, doctors because I am a prostrated doctor and that's understandable. <laughs> Hello po, Mr. President. Okay po. Um, gusto ko pong sanayunan yung sinasabi kanina ni Dr. Anna Onglin. 
kung uh, undergoing the test at the time of arrival, so kung mag-test tayo sa time of arrival, pwede rin po mag-false negative yun, di ba? Kung mag-test naman po tayo on the fifth day or on the seventh day, mas maganda yung chances na makatch natin. But at the very least po, Mr. President, we really have to enforce in strict quarantine. No, It could be 10 days. The most ideal is 14 days. In other countries, they even do it for 21 days. So, uh, yun po yung makikita natin. At sa pag-aaral po natin, Mr. President, based on genomic sequences, may isa lang na makalusot. May isa lang na makalusot. Manganak siya ng marami. If you see the genetic tree po ng virus, may isa lang makalusot, lima. Ang lima ng mga, mga anak na mga anak na mga anak. At ito, yan po yung nakikita natin dito sa mga B117, itong UK variant. At ika, ito yung mga South African variant. Kung titingnan po natin yung roots nila, isa, dalawa lang makalusot. Mga anak na sila ng mga anak. At alam din po natin na, syempre, nanggaling din po kung titingnan natin sa tree, Nung galing din naman sila sa ating borders, no? So, may mga uh, weakness yung ating borders na gusto po natin pag, uh, pagpabuting pa. Kaya po, uh, kailangan talaga yung quarantine measures. Alam mo naman, President, kung iuwi natin sila sa mga bahay, alam mo naman tayo mga Pilipino, exuberant, ang hirap-hirap talaga, mag-chat-chat talaga sa neighbor, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan. So, kailangan din po na kahit doon, pauwiin man sila sa bahay nila o LGU man sila, we really need to enforce po yung strict quarantine. Yan lang po talaga yung ating panlaban dito. Salamat po. Ang masabi ko, ma'am, is uh, actually kung yung protocol sa bahay, hindi nasusunod yan. Uh, in a scale of 1 to 10, you may have a compliance of only about 4. Hindi talaga nasusunod yan. Uh, so, thank you for your uh, uh, educating us more of uh, the dangers of COVID-19. Wala na bang iba? Alam mo, si B uh, this meeting was called because of uh, the complaint of not really the complaint, but the misgivings of uh, uh, Secretary Bellio of the dwindling funds of uh, the OFW, na, which should only be spent for their care and needs. So, yun ang na, na, at least naintindihan rin niyo kung bakit mga may, uh, there are officials in government which are t taking the other view or the extreme measure, or would want to paddle in the middle of the river, uh, maintindihan na ninyo ngayon, at least uh, kung bakit. So, nakikita niya na maliit na yung ano, pera, he's uh, raising the alarm actually. He's raising the alarm of the possibility of uh, uh, having uh, no more funds to take care of this uh, kind of situation that we are in now. Kung wala na ako kayong tanong, I'd like to ask the guys here, the cabinet members, wala na ba kayong tanong, uh, Sen Senator uh, Bong, ikaw may yung sa health. You're the chairman of the health committee sa Senate. Kung wala ka nang maitanong, uh, we would, uh, uh, well, give our profuse uh, thanks to the panel to Dr. Salbanya, Alexandria, uh, Onglim, and Pal Palmes Saloma for your kind presence and your time with us. Uh, the pleasure of your company. And thank you for educating us. I cannot I cannot comply. There is no compromise here. Hindi ako magkukompromise. So, I'm just an off-the-cuff off statement before I'm, we make the final decision here. I, I cannot, I, I'm not ready for a compromise here. So, about lalo na ngayon. Yung ibang sakit siguro, pwede pa yung mga rabis-rabis dyan. Pero ito, Eh, talagang, as you have said, it's uh, dapo dito, dapo doon. And then you have the exponential problem now of uh, how to take care of uh, the Filipinos. 
Maraming salamat po sa inyo at uh, sana ma can have you at, uh, you, we can call you again to share with us uh, uh, some things that we do not know because we are not doctors. Thank you. Amat. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po.